Hey everybody, we're back here talking about Rogue One again. I've seen it twice now. I have my review up over on vivaladil.com. You can check that out, read that there. But there's a lot of things that changed um, between the trailers as we went along through these movies. And there's a lot of stuff that's missing from the trailers in the movie. And not just different takes of shots. Uh, lines and stuff that I can remember. So we're going to go through, have a look at the teaser trailers and stuff like that and point out and see if we can spot stuff that's missing or was simply changed in the movie. Um, and specifically stuff that kind of seems like it might have been to do with the reshoots and stuff. Example, on the front cover of the, the Force Awakens, uh, the art of the Force Awakens, there's this cool shot, Kylo Ren, lightsaber out. That shot was in the original trailer for The Force Awakens. Uh, he comes out, he's all limping along, throws the hand out, vroom, vroom, you see the cross guard light up for the first time. That was my favorite moment of any of The Force Awakens trailers, apart from the Chewie were home, but we all cried for that. The cross guard light up, I was like, oh damn, that's exciting. I wasn't one of those people that's like, a cross guard light up, that was my favorite moment. It is not in the movie. So we're looking for those, but we're also looking for reshoot moments. So let's jump into the teaser trailer first. State your name for the record. Jen Erso. Forgery of imperial no, documents. No, this is an, um, Possession of stolen property. Like, yeah, aggravated assault. Resisting arrest. On your own from the age of 15. Reckless. Fit. So Mon, Mon Mothman never gives this speech, but specifically that part about saying from on her own at the age of 15. I'm pretty sure in the movie that we got, um, Saw says to her that, well, she says to Saw that, oh, you abandoned me when, you was, when I was 16. So she would have been on her own from the age of 16. I know that's just a one year slight difference. Still interesting. Aggressive and undisciplined. This is a rebellion, isn't it? I rebel. See, that line's never in the movie. I was fine with that. The line, um, I always thought worked fine in the trailer. It's kind of a corny line, but it, it works in kind of selling this tone and like um, portraying her as a character in a trailer. So I was fine with that not being in the movie. All this music we never got, guys. All this music. We have a mission for you. A major weapons test is imminent. We need to know what it is and how to destroy it. All this stuff, see, this never makes it into the movie. And I think they do this, I think they stop all this stuff only at the second trailer. This whole, rec the idea that she's recruited, because um, in the original movie she's more or less grabbed as an in way to soar. Um, but the idea that she's recruited, the idea that the, uh, the Resistance is talking about a weapons test, like they already know a weapon test is going to happen, and they're looking for a way to like stop it or something like that. They have no idea what the weapon even looks like or anything in the Rogue One movie we get. So, that's a big change. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Really cool shot of Krennic. Really, really cool. I remember that's a shot I really love. Never got that. See, here's this thing. Everyone had this... My personal theory, everyone had all these theories about Saul Guerrero. The whole, oh, he's got hair, he doesn't have hair. And it was very easy if you thought about it for longer than a minute and didn't jump to conclusions to be like, well, it's probably like a... Because it's probably like... A, a period of time. It's probably like a flashback. It's probably a thing, which it does turn out. Because at the start of the movie, uh, when we're on Lamal, Lamu, Lamu, um, when Young Jin's escaping, um, Forrest doesn't have hair there in that shot. You never see his lips move though, and I, I I'm pretty sure, 99% sure. I've only seen it twice. Twice is enough to, to, to have a say, guys. Come on. Um, but I'm pretty sure you never actually see Forrest's lip move, lips move in that part. So I feel like they took this footage here or like shots from here or something like that maybe, put it into that scene and then had Forrest come in just do a VA to say the lines he has in that scene. But they took this stuff here because I'm not against the theory and I have nothing against them if they did do this. 
there was the whole theory about they had this character. It was never Saul Grey. It was just a rebelling guy. And then eventually someone... I, I just presume everything's done by Pablo Hidalgo. I just, someone's come in like, why don't we make that character Saul Guerrero from the Clone Wars? Because that would just be a cool way to tie, you know, that anime series. It would be a cool thing to bring in an anime series character. And if you already have a character that's very similar to Saw and you can do this type of things why why not and it's not like oh it makes the whole universe feel smaller it doesn't because it's not one of the main characters you know they're grabbing like a random character from the clone wars animated series that was in a three four episode arc or whatever it was it's not a big known character so i never had an issue with it so if they did do that i think maybe they did grab parts from these scenes and then they reshot them to make him look older and other part what will you do when they catch you we never got this part either here. This big, they made a big deal about this whole them running through the base here. This so this would be the Scarif base, and when we obviously in the movie, see, we'll get to this later because obviously there is shots later. I don't know if it's in, at the end of this teaser or they get to it in the first official trailer where Jin is running along the beach, holding the plans. We now know that what she has is definitely Death Star plans. I didn't think it was. I did a video early in the week talking about the battlefront dlc and i was like i don't think they're the actual um death star plans they are and uh that shot of her running along the beach never happens she never even gets close to that there's not there's no that's de definitely a completely different plot line there what will you do if they break you this see this has this has to be scarif right this part, see, this is when it gets so confusing. This is one of the great shots from the original teaser trailer, too. This was one of those shots she was like, hmm, this is really great. And you have, you have, this is really weird. So you have Kranik come along. I presume it has to be Scarif, right? We'll get to that in a sec. It has to be Scarif. Beach, tall building, so it must be just outside. But Kranik never makes it off that tower either. So the idea that Jin, Cassian, and K2 get out and try and get to the u-wing or something like that like they do in battlefront and maybe krennic chases them along to the beach with troopers or something like that maybe they all die here and krennic come fucking comes over maybe they upload the plans in the ship and then krennic like comes along and he, he lives through the movie i don't know but there's lots of stuff in this teaser trailer that's obviously heavily from a different and the the reshoots were rumored to mostly revolve around the end of the movie um, more so than anything else. So all this makes sense. It's a completely different movie. This shot, which we do get in the movie, but a lot of people thought must have been cut because it never um, showed up in any of the trailers again. We do get this shot. One amazing part. If you continue to fight. See, so they run out of something here. I always thought they run out of something, which they don't. So, this is... They're running out of like an un the underground bunker part here in Scarif, I suppose. But when they do this in the actual movie we got, of course, they're trying to get to that switch and it's not in a huge opening. <laughs> that's Cassian, I never know. And that's, is that Jin? That's Jin. So they're running. So this is all, this all must be after they get out of. What, what will you become? become? They had this whole play. See, they they never came back to this. They never came back to this whole play on Jin possibly turning evil or being uh, uh, actually like an Empire spy and all this type of thing. Maybe that's what it was. Of course, she ends up in that uniform in the film we got. But the the the, the theme they play on in this teaser trailer of what will you become, all this sort of thing. Then, as far as I remember, they never go back to that in any of the other trailers of a trailers either. Okay, so now we got the second trailer. I love that play on the original dun, dun, dun. we never got that either. The world is co coming undone. Imperial flags rain across the galaxy. I don't think he says that line of it. He doesn't say the line about the world coming undone, but he they, he does say the line about the imperial flags and the sky, so they could have just changed that. Can you be trusted without your shackles? 
Let's just get this over with, shall we? That never happens. We have a mission for you. A major weapon. See, at this stage, I've got a mission for you. And she's not like... She doesn't say like, Fuck off, Mom Mothma. I'm not a soldier. What do you mean you've got a mission for me? But the way she kind of looks at her is like, Okay, what's the mission? For like, you. We've got a mission for you. The whole so they still haven't changed at this stage. This is like August. This trailer comes out, and they're still on this this road. I think the 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 plot swing to her not really getting recruited, but like more or less asked to just be a, a key card into Soul Green. Really a major ahead. weapons test is imminent. We need to know how to destroy it. So they're still on about this whole major weapons test is imminent. 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 Jesus. Christ. If you're really doing this. I want to help. Good. See that? The whole line of it, if, if you're really doing this, I want to help, um, doesn't play in at the start of the movie, obviously, because she's never in charge of that mission, but that line could have been used for later in the movie when she wants to go to Scarif and no one else does. So it could make sense. That could have been a non-used line from that part. Good. I've been recruited. Although she never sits there in that seat at all, so maybe it was. I don't know. through the rebellion for a long time. We destroyed our home. I fight the Empire now. He never says that, but we don't need it. I fear nothing. All is as the Force wills it. The captain says you are a friend. I will not kill you. Thanks. That line's missing, and that was a line that everyone loved in the because after the first teaser came out, everyone was like, damn, this Jesus. Everyone was like, damn, this movie is looking dark as shit. And then they kind of snuck that into the the, the tra second trailer here, and everyone's like, oh, it's gonna look a bit of levity, it's gonna be a humor to it. But then this part doesn't really make sense because well, I mean, in the movie we got it doesn't make sense because K2 has met Jin way before this when he knocks it the hell out, rescuing. Him. There isn't much time. Every day. So here's. So there's no Tarkin here, as far as we can see, and this is above Jeddah, and there's no Tarkin. There we can see. They grow stronger. Well, this is him giving Tarkin the evils. Like. There is a ninety-seven point six percent chance of failure. He means well. This is our chance to make a real difference. See, that's very not like the truth is it? This is our chance to make a real difference. This is our chance to make a real difference. She's saying that to Saul Gurra. The, the Jin Erso Saul Gurra interactions we got in the final movie is very much she hates the Empire. She, but she gives zero shits about joining the resistance because they done nothing but shit for her as well. She's like, fuck the resistance, fuck the empire, fuck all of Saul's like, well, you're the gin I remember, I guess. Um, well, sorry for abandoning you in a hole. But this whole, she's she's not down, she's not talking. She's She looks like she's uplifting Saw here to be like, we can do good together, which is, I don't know, weird. Because she's, and, until they go see her daddy... She has no intentions of helping stop the Death Star. Death Star. It's not really until she... I mean, in my mind, the, after um, Galen dies, that's when she's finally like... Um, she finally kind of... The only reason she wants to stop the Death Star is like a revenge kind of thing to finish her dad's work. It's not really about the resistance even at that day. It's not like she has a truer calling to resistance. I never feel like... If at any of the movies, she never... Until that moment where everyone's like, we'll help you on your mission, Jin, that's when she feels a little bit of something towards the resistance, I think. But up until that point, anything she's doing is just kind of as an honor to her dad as a, a want to get revenge and want to finish his work type of thing. So a moment like this seems really weird in the in the Jin Erso that we, we know. Are you with me? See, this, this shot we're... I always found it weird in the from even the first time I was watching, as soon as we started watching Rogue One and she's up on that tower and she pulls out her gun as she walks over to the um the display thing to readjust the satellite or whatever. I was like, 
why do you have your gun out? Unless, and then I started, as soon as I got a cinema, was one thing I was thinking about. I was like, what the, did they like just digitally edit out the, the, they just went over and rewiped the, they like put in a TIE fighter and then they just deleted it, but they still ever have a gun out. It just seemed really weird to pull out your blaster like that. What do you, like, what are you going to do? <laughs> it, it kind of makes sense here if she knows this TIE fighter's coming up. That's all the way. This. And obviously we never get, like, um, this is fine, we don't, we didn't actually need this in the movie. This shot of Vader just looking at the console or something like this works right at the end of this trailer because it's not a big moment, it's not the, the stuff we get in the third trailer or later in the TV spots. The slightest tease of Vader and you just have him looking at something that looks like it should, like in the, the Death Star control room or something like that. It was great for a trailer, um, this missing from the movie isn't an issue to me at all. Trailer 3, which only came out like October or something like that. And by now, if we watch this, it all should make sense. Uh, we should be seeing little, less and less... Tim, whatever I do. Random things. Stuck from the old you. Rogue One, I believe. So you understand? I understand. So the whole thing, maybe they changed their character completely because they never show an inkling of this whole... They never show an inkling of her her dad in other trailers. They never mention Galen. They never show footage of this. Um, so maybe in the original, it was... Because that original art, the original concept photo we got sent out when they announced the movie of, of them all just kind of sitting in that that room together and this is when all we knew about rogue one was it was a band of rebels spies going to get the get the thing so maybe at the time Jin was just kind of this this girl this rebellious girl that didn't have this backstory with her dad being so close to the to the, the thing of the death star and all this so maybe this was part of the reshoots maybe they added way more to Jin's backstory wasn't happy with her character wasn't happy with the, the, maybe they come they maybe they wanted to explain the the Death Star weakness which they do finally and they needed a way to do that and they just linked it all up um, because it is weird they never mention I suppose or show Whatever anything like this. I do it to protect you. So you understand? I understand. Rebellion that shot that to so be. that shot's not in the um, the final product but that's fine that's that's I love this shot of course because you you see the u-wing you see like the sense of scale and like the moment I never realized it was a statue of a Jedi at first and then when you finally do you're like holy shit but similar to that thing I was talking about with Kylo Ren from the force awakens it's fine it doesn't affect the movie you still see the statue from a, a different way they shoot it um, you seem like gathering outside at the first time they're on Jeddah. It's fine. All that remains to it's push back the Empire. That big deal. You think you might be able to help us? When was the last time you were in contact with your father? What is this? See, they change. They, they do so many trailers. They do all these, these first two trailers where the interaction in that scene is... We've got a mission for you. Um... You're such a troublemaker. Uh, we need to go, kind of thing. And then it, it's now it turns in this trailer to finally being. When's the last time you've heard from your father? He's integral to these these this this upcoming weapon. All other trailers, it's we've heard about this weapons test that's going to happen. It's really different. Critical to the development of a super weapon. If my father built this thing, we need to find him. All right. How many do I need? They are requesting a call sign. It's, um... Rogue. Rogue One. 
in the film. Can't make sense. So this shot, this, this part is not in the film. So this is presumably on the Death Star, or it could be a Star Destroyer, I suppose. You don't really know. Um, but you don't have this moment, and I'm kind of glad because although, although I quite liked seeing. Krennic in the trailer. In this moment, the moment I watched the trailer, seeing Krennic kind of walk towards and more or less talk in a tone that I, that you shouldn't talk to Vader in really. The power that we're dealing with this thing is unimaginable. Vader's like, don't fucking raise your voice to me. <laughs> chokes the, chokes the man. I like the way, when they have the interaction in the movie on Mustafa, and yes it is Mustafa where they have the interaction. Krennic's scared. You can tell he's scared of Vader. He's kind of scared of him the entire time they're talking. And then he just kind of... He gets ahead of... He gets ahead of himself for that one second where he he talks to Vader the way he shouldn't. And what happens? He gets straight ahead. So this scene... Like, if it, there's no way. There's no way Krennic could talk to Vader like this. I'm fine with this. Um, I'm happy that... I'm happy with the amount of Vader that Vader was used in the movie anyway. So I'm not really missing any of this Vader stuff. We are dealing with here. Is so this guy, I always, so I was on the train where I was like, oh, this guy has to be Tarkin. If the Empire has this kind of After seeing how he looks in the movie now, that doesn't look like Tarkin at all. Unless there was a stage, because I think they said like, there was only like a week or two ago where they was like, I oh, will find finish the special effects of the movie. And everyone was like, oh, what the fuck? Um, but maybe they originally had a guy, like this could be Tarkin still. I, that does not look like the CGI Tarkin that we got. That could be Tarkin still, but played by a different actor, which I would be in fine with. I always assumed that they just got someone who kind of looked like him and I was going to go with it and I would have been like, fine, because anyone with half a brain can be like, the fucking guy's dead. Just, you know, imagine it. It's fine. Uh, he's not Peter Cushing. It's fine. Just go to the next movie. All of a sudden he looks different. It's Peter Cushing. It's fine. It's a damn movie, okay? But maybe they, maybe they decided on these CGI changes in the, in the kind of the last coming months. And that was one, some of the, the late work. And maybe that was some of the grinding that was doing on this, the CGI. Work. If the Empire has this kind of power, what chance do we have? We have hope. Rebellions are built on hope. So far, I've only spotted one difference. Of this moment. That's what I'm saying. The force is strong. Make ten men feel like a hundred. We'll take the next chance. And the next time. You're all rebels, aren't you? Save the rebellion! Is that shot? Oh, that's Bodie. Yeah, so that... Yeah, no, that's fine. I don't, I can't, I don't think that shot, maybe that shot was in the movie, I just can't remember because there was a lot of shit exploding. It doesn't matter, it's not like they changed anything there, but I assume that's Bodhi. Save the rebellion! Save the dream! And, uh, yeah, Star Wars, I guess. So that's the three main trailers for Rogue One. And yeah, as as I kind of thought, by trailer three, there was only that one kind of thing I noticed that was a, like a bit different from the movie we finally got. Um, the first teaser trailer, lots of things to spot different. Second trailer, still lots of things to spot that are different. So I really do believe they, they changed something towards the ending there specifically um about how they they stay in the tower in scarif and like n never get off it to the beach because because we do have the the shot of her running on the beach with the death star plans we do have Kranik outside i presume that's on scarif walking into that water there we have them running out of the thing um towards the adats and shit like that now that happens they never make it back to, once i enter that they never go back down there at all so it's weird it's interesting so i don't know what how the movie i'd like to know how the movie ended 
Um, not because I have a problem with how the current movie ended. I thought it was great. Fantastic movie. But just, I'm interested. I'm interested from a simple, like, historical, what the hell happened in the movie kind of aspect. The, and the, I do kind of believe the other thing they may have changed was Jin herself. Because they never mentioned her dad at all. And maybe they didn't want to talk about her dad. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they just never showed it and I'm overthinking it. Because I can't remember when they announced that Mads was even cast. And maybe they announced Mads was cast, you know, ages and ages ago when all those first trailers started coming out. So they just never showed him in the actual movie. They probably did. But I feel like they, they must have changed something with her character there. Um, at least a little bit. Even if it wasn't that big. I feel like they did add more backstory to her or something like that. And they definitely changed the, majorly the ending of the movie. So that's it. That's uh, that's a look at the three Star Wars trailers. I hope you enjoyed that watching along with me. Um, if you spot anything else that I didn't pause on and have a look at, feel free to drop a line in the comments and tell me what it is. And uh, you can tell me your theories about what you reckon they changed towards the end of the movie and stuff like that. Um, or if you think they changed anything else. Or if you, th you think you have a, a, a big reason for why the movie would have ended with them, I don't know, getting the old one and getting blown up there. Sure, do that. Till next.